This video is brought to you by Empower, which brings you business power for your fitness industry. Use the code BROCAS upon registration to receive a special discount. Let's do like the basic like wrestlers tie up. Let's try that. Can you guide us through? I mean, this um, is not... so we sometimes we call it like 50 50. So one person's hand is going to be on you on the back of your neck. Right, and so, so let's say, right. yep. So, so he's got his left hand on your, on your neck. Yeah. Okay. And then you put your left hand on his neck, just right. like he is. So you're going to mirror what he does right. and then put your right hand on the crook of his elbow. Mm. Like on uh, the very edge of the elbow? Uh, on the uh, inside of the elbow. Inside, okay. Inside. Um, the, yep, yeah, yeah kind of like that. And then, okay. so both of you are going to be like like that. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you familiar with like an arm drag? No, I, I, I kind of know it, but never tried it. So there's a lot of stuff okay. we can go through. Yeah. So you can do this uh, from where you are uh, either way. So what, what I would do from there is take your left hand and almost do like a, a circle where you're going to get his arm off of your elbow and you're going to gain control of his wrist. So and your right hand is going to hook up under his tricep. Go here. Uh-huh. There you go. So you, you can see where that position can lead you into certain things in Aikido where you could either do, uh, you can maybe do something up to like, like a Shihonage. Right. You can do. You can pass the arm out of the way. This arm, the arm drag, is used for so many different things. Some people use it to actually gain control of the arm. Some people mm -hmm. use it to pass the arm out of the way and then go for like a leg takedown. Like maybe you could do like a uh, rimi nage. Right. Um, you can do. Uh, you can keep the arm, go into like a shoulder throw. Mm -hmm. um, you can go into another other grips. Basically, getting that swing of the arm and getting it out of the way is the most important part because that's really going to upset their balance and their footwork and their their body is going to contort so you can right. take a, advantage of them in a lot of different ways sure um so why don't you try that just just see what feels natural to you okay. you know sure. swing that arm out of the way All right so from here i go uh -huh. here and yep then, and pass so it you're gonna you're gonna take it and pass it in front of your body so so, so move here. your left hand a little bit lower so yeah so, so if you pass that okay and then and then what feels natural to you? So the Riminage is one yep. option. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's do one more. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay. So here, here. So from here, I go here. Yep. Pass. And then pass. Uh huh. Well, you, it's a mm -hmm. bit of a, a bit of a variation, but yeah. If I go for the chin, actually, one thing you mentioned Shionage, and mm -hmm. uh, so from here, it actually. Oops, sorry. Here, mm -hmm. I'm thinking even maybe, but but tell me if, if that makes sense to you. So if I go from here towards bringing yep. the arm here, that that makes uh -huh. sense. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay, that was that. Yeah, that felt quite good. So mm -hmm. Let's do one. Yep. Okay, I'll I'll try that again just to see. So here, so here, here. Okay. And maybe you can even get. Um, into like a, a Sankyo or something from there if you gain the uh, wrist properly. Right. Let, um, so I don't, ex you know, don't, ex I wouldn't expect perfection right now. Sure, you, sure, you know, yeah. this is all experimentation for, for, for you, but yeah, yeah, uh, it'll totally. definitely help uh, give you some ideas on what to work on. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. That's, that's, that's actually exactly what I'm looking for since. Um, it, when we do Aikido, we don't go into these realms normally. When we, we get into that realm, what I had in the video, there's just no idea where to go. It's like, yeah. where, where's my Aikido? So it's good to go through that just to have, just to connect the dots so I could work with them. So, so it's good. Right. It's good. So I was going to say, um, there's, there's another grip you can transition to from that arm drag. So, so go back to the arm drag again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from here, so here. And so past the arm drag, and actually you're going to be standing with the arm going across your chest like this, and you're going to be facing 180 degrees from where you are now, basically. Here. Right. Yep. And then what you're going to do is move your left hand up to the armpit, and so. you're basically going to switch hands. Yep, switch hands like this. 
right? Yep. That's called Russian grip in wrestling. Okay. okay. And from there, you can see where you can basically do. Um, I can't remember what it's called. You basically, it's like the it's like the the ending part of shihonagi. So you can um, put your hand, your left hand over the crook of his elbow now. Left hand. So yep. So go over. Yeah. And then take take the wrist and start folding it back. All right. Start so holding his arm back like shihonagi, basically. So basically, bring it. Straight exactly. In. Yeah. What I would do though is put your arm, uh, your left arm through that little hole that you make, and actually grab your right, so own. Right. Double it. Exactly. There you go. Right. Yep. And that Russian grip has a lot of control. You once you get into that Russian grip, yeah. you apply pressure with his elbow across your chest, and you want to apply pressure with your shoulder on the on the back of his shoulder also. And it almost takes him completely out of control. It's a very controlling position, even though you're only on the arm. Right. Um, it gains you a lot of leverage against your opponent. So you want your left shoulder to be putting pressure on the back of his right shoulder. So my left shoulder. So basically yep. here. Yep. Yes. So you want to almost be on top of him and 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 putting downward pressure. So, so he's going to be bent over. Right. So I'm yep. bringing him down. So you're bending him over with that pressure and you're applying pressure against his elbow, almost like an arm bar across your chest as well. So across the chest here, I have yep. the camera so yep. I can't do too much, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, so you're almost doing an arm bar across his, his chest nice. and you got the pressure on his elbow. Because I'm So looking, there you can do, yeah. uh, take your left leg and you can do an inside trip and take him down. You can go to Urigeishi it's it's the basically that that end of shihonagi, but it's just you ah, know, okay. going okay. It's without it's, the four directions. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. So it basically meant when you go. So oh, there, yeah, but I got exactly. to pass in and here. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So and also with the Russian grip, see how you got one hand facing up and one hand facing down. Uh, yeah. So your left your left hand is facing yeah. up, and the and the other hand. So you can do variations of this grip too, where where you can have you know, have them this way or this way. Can you see what I'm doing with my hands? So here, but that's... Yep. Yeah. So, so you pull it, make sure you pull it everything in tight. Yeah. Or you can have, you can have both arms underneath. Mm. So there's, nice. there's lots of different ways to use Russian grip. Um, my favorite is to have one up and one down though. Mm. Because it's a little more natural after doing the arm guy because you can switch right into it. Right. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does feel more natural here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quick uh, question. Can, if, can, I, can I jump in with a question? Yeah. So in terms of his other hand, uh, would it be like a, I don't know, is it punch. called like a la rabbit punch or, or would it be a, uh -huh. the danger here of a punch in terms of MMA? So you might have some risk of getting hit, but you honestly have a lot of control over him. Okay. Um, and if you if you stay behind him a little, I mean, this this isn't going to have any power. If he's, yeah. if he's trying to punch you like this, there's no power there. Okay. If you kind of, you know, have your head down, right, he might... Here. You might be able to get a few knocks on the top of your head, but, but not there's not exception. many power there. Right. And and what you're going to be doing is is you know you're not going to just stand there. Sure. You're going to yeah. be you're going to definitely be controlling and moving and try to you know take his balance one way and then move into something else. Don't always think of your you know like everybody thinks of the wrist locks as the finishing move. I and it's the same thing as striking. You know, not every strike is going to be the knockout. Sometimes like your jab is just going to be a setup. Yeah. So if you are tying up with somebody or you are starting to get, you know, let's say you are starting to get Kodagaishi on somebody or, or just, just using, you know, some sort of risk manipulation, right? that can almost be a setup for something else. You know, you might not get that clean, perfect, you know, Nikyo sure. or something Sure. just standing there because in a fight it, it, anything happened and, and it gets ugly really quick and there's a lot of, you know, uh, viciousness to it. So if I if I go to do this and then I pull away, I just open myself up for like uh, a strike now. Yeah. So think of think of like your aikido as as not only a finisher. Right. It can be something to set up other things. It can set up strikes. Strikes can set up the aikido. Aikido can set up strikes, or right. or other submissions. And yeah. they do that in BJJ all the time. Mm. Um, they'll do like a. You know, there's a lock here uh, called the the key lock or the hammer lock or the Americana, where you're you're on your back, and you basically torque the shoulder. And the way to defend this a lot of times is reaching through and grabbing your own hand, so they quit you know torquing on your shoulder. But when I reach through like this, 
they grab my arm and take me out for an arm bar. Right. So, so it's, it's kind of like baiting. Yeah, right, yeah. You, you, you trick your opponent into thinking that this is the attack, right. but it's not. So, so I, you know, that's, a, that's one way to think about your Aikido, too, is, is if you right. go for this, don't only make this your 100% you know, com- committed to this is it. You know, maybe, maybe this is a setup for something else. If I, if I pull away, now I just gave you this arm instead. Now this arm's up front, and you can take this right. and, and do something with this arm because I, you know, I, don't, I don't want you to you know, lock out this hand. Yeah. You know? So try to think of ways to use your Aikido you know, uh, strategically right. in, those, in those senses. So there's one thing you can do where you're going to take basically your left hand yep. and try to come across to his uh, left hand wrist sneak your arm in front of you so you're going to make a little bit of space yep and put your arm yep and go to his left wrist sure there you go yeah and then what you want to do is move your right arm a little bit like underneath his elbow so yep uh but but have your fingers facing out sorry have your fingers facing out like this okay so here and you're going to basically, this, this is called a, a snatch, and you're going to just snatch that arm off of you and pass it in front so of you. Here? Yeah, right. there you go. Yeah. Okay. So you can see where that could naturally flow into some things, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's a Nikkyo, yeah. this, the I could go down yeah. for the elbow. Yeah, there's, there's uh-huh. a bunch of things. It depends, obviously, how much he, he would allow me, but yeah. yeah there's right. Things. And so that's just another example of, you know, some things you can move into. Right. Um, and, and you know, and while you're doing this, think about strikes setting this up too. You're going to be doing knees. Um, you might be, you know, elbows. You know, palm, you know, uh, stiff arming the face, something like that. The probability of just getting that clean, you know, you know, nikyo right off the bat is yeah. is, is going to be difficult. Right. And honestly, the the number one enemy for for like the wrist locks when you start getting into this stuff is going to be sweat. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> It's right. it's difficult to pull some of this off. It gets really slippery. Your hands, you know, you you might have a nice grip, and then whoop, your hand slips. With the the striking, you're gonna want to work on, you know, striking alone. Also, you're gonna want to develop good footwork, good head movement, mm. um, having a proper guard, um, knowing you know when to guard high, when to guard low. But we can just start out with some basic things. Uh, you know, a lot of things, or a lot of times, people think of Aikido only as wrist locks. Yeah. Um, there's the there, you Aikido has a huge library of moves, you know, almost, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the similar throws from judo, just be creative and use as much as you can. So one thing that a lot of people on top try to do is get, uh, wrist and hand control. So let's have him put his right hand on your left wrist. He's going to try to control that by pinning it to your chest. To the chest. Okay. Yep. And so what you can do is take your right hand and put it on his forearm. So forearm here. And a little higher. Right. There you go. And pin it to your chest. Pin his arm to your chest. Now take your left arm and start pushing forward. And you can see where that puts pressure on. Right. That's going to lock out his wrist. Yep. And right. and push push it out. Start locking it out. Yep. Yeah. And that you can see that's kind of that's uh, basically a wrist lock from there. Right. And keep yeah. keep it tight to your chest though. Keep keep your right hand down. Yep. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Keep yeah. it. You have to keep it tight. Um, right. And keep you know keep pushing. Make him tap. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. So that's something you can try. Um, mm. That's actually uh, that I've seen that used actually in BGJ, and right. seen seen people get get tapped with that. Right. Uh, that's kind of like a sneaky move um, you can do from there. You can do almost a lot of the same moves like Nikyo Kotagaishi basically in your same position too. Right. So if you start getting into hand fighting or if he starts trying to pass your guard and you're trying to control his arms and, and prevent him from, from manipulating you, um, you can try to you know get that arm control and wrist control and then start working into like a, a wrist lock of some kind. So now this time, instead of going uh, with your right arm onto his forearm, yeah. go up to his wrist. Go up to his wrist and then go to Nikio from there. So... Meaning, writer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is common for usually this is already when he's in the mount, but you can do this from here too. So you can practice these from mount or guard. Okay. Just to try all these different scenarios. Hmm. So so basically, stick your stick your arm out, grab his thumb, 
But with the other hand? Yep, grab his thumb. Okay, right. And, and start rotating his wrist and free your left hand. So is it yep. here? There you go. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I think the camera is messing me up, but that's where you should end up. Um, right. So he's on the back side of your arm. Yeah, How about on the, the front side of your arm? So like like this? That, that, that yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. That's it. Right, that makes so now sense. When you, so now when you turn your arm out, right. yes, yes. Right here. There you Just, go. So right there. There you go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So of course, you know, if we're talking MMA, you're going to be worrying about punches and things too. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, you're going to be using your knees when you're in guard. You're, you're going to try to uh, lock your ankles, you know, behind his waist. And you're going to be, yeah. you know, pushing and pulling and posting. You're going to be doing things with your knees too. So this is the one area where you're going to need some just basic grappling experience on its own also. Right. So um, that's where, that's what's really going to be able to tie everything together. This. Well, I, I think it's just a matter of making adjustments, and I, I mentioned this uh, in one of my videos, uh, right. in the first one, part one, what you need to know is that these adjustments might take you out of your comfort zone with how you've uh, traditionally practiced your techniques. You know, like, right. a, like a, a, lot, a lot of people have been successfully used judo in MMA, mm. um, but they need to make adjustments because they don't have the gi to grab anymore. Mm. Um, so, you know, maybe... Uh, Instead of doing a, uh, their, you know, seonagi, uh, you know, just you're gonna have to just figure out ways to adjust your techniques. And like I said, don't always think of your aikido as the finisher. Right. You know, yeah. think of it as a setup. Right. Um, it can be the finisher, but use use it in multiple ways. Like if I'm using my my judo as a setup, uh, I might use you know like a a trip, like a um, let's say I try to use osotagari. Um, but maybe I don't get to finish the throw, but I at least get him off balance enough to, you know, go into something else. Mm. That one move that we were doing from the Russian grip, mm -hmm. um, I kind of like that too because with MMA, you can come over the top with like a punch mm. and do that do that tie up. Mm. And then when you're in this position, you can go into like an elbow across the face. Mm. Once you once you finish the, you know, once you're starting to to get that the arm to go back. Mm. It, it lends itself naturally into doing an elbow across the face. So those are things too. You can try to think of how to how to perfectly blend all the aspects of whatever you're trying to do together. If I got somebody in a in a nikyo or something and it's not quite working out, but look how open they are. You know, you can throw a, a kick there. The more experience you have in these other things too, the more stuff I think will start flowing naturally. Your creativity will start to grow. Right, and you'll just see, you know, kind of like these little, you know, you'll get these light bulbs going off. Oh, this will work with this. This will work with this. Right. Um, that's that's really, I think, my best advice is to, mm. you know, experience these other parts of MMA, right. and then you'll they'll kind of work together a little better. Um, yeah. And and honestly, I think uh, there is like a missing link in MMA, and and it is this, you know, small joint manipulation stuff. Uh, we've seen ankle locks, which is small joint, which is, you know, that's the equivalent of the wrist, basically. But uh, a lot of it just gets left out. Cause I, I honestly think it's just because it's not as popular. It hasn't caught on yet. And when you look at who's becoming successful in MMA these days, it's somebody who does something different. Sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of MMA has really become homogenized. Everybody does, you know, wrestling, boxing, Muay Thai, and BJJ. It's right. kind of no longer mixed martial arts anymore. It's almost, it's been categorized. Every, you know pretty much what everybody's going to do. Right. Um, it's usually these wild card people who have something different. Like Ronda Rousey was was dominating with her judo for a long time. Mm. Um, we're seeing a lot of these people with karate or taekwondo kicks and, yeah. and stances and footwork come in and do some interesting things. Um, and I, I honestly think Aikido kind of has this this open window where it, can, mm. it has an opportunity to kind of be that, this next... Uh, growth in in uh, other areas, right? So, cool.